Praise the Lord. Please let us come into the presence of God as we start our School of the Spirit service this evening. We come into God's presence by the blood of Jesus. We confess our sins. We ask for and receive by faith forgiveness, cleansing, and the purging of our consciences from all dead works. The scripture says that if we say we have no sin, we lie. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And how much more shall the blood of Christ purge your conscience from all dead works to serve the living God? So let us do this in faith. The Bible says that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So as we come to the presence of the living God, we search our hearts. Confess our sins, repent of them, and we receive forgiveness, cleansing, and the purging of our consciences from all dead works to serve the living God. Let us do this in faith. In Jesus' name, we say, Father, we confess our sins and so clean with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, we have life. Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. We choose to fear God. So we humble ourselves by submitting to the will of God, even when we don't feel like it, especially in prayer, knowing the certainty of his judgment if we disobey and the security of his mercy when we obey. And so we have the humility of the man of Christ. We say these words in our hearts as we acknowledge the three persons of the God that we thanksgive in our hearts. And as we acknowledge them, we ask for mercy, grace, and help so that we, as we pray in the spirit, release the power of God to enable us to do what you have just confessed. So let us pray in faith now. Say, Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. Riso frado panda bramba kalabako shkend over gel bomb pedigri alabaka sunday. Mind of rada panda glamaka shkonte de glabaka sotari. Lover de dombra galamba de galabaka santa ribaka shkitondari. Mind over gido nekote sonte ribaka shanda regari. Mind over gide. Lever de dombra galabaka santa ribaka shanda regare. Lover de dombra kapampa satari alabaka shkotandoria. Jema pa zaptivando brado panda glamaka sonte re. Lever get over get temper get over coskent over get over to Sonderia. Menda vanda bando crama cozonta cruba casate. Jama pa sata cadialaba sotantoria. Mend over get temper to get over coskent over gari. Mend over gade. Naka soto de dialaba cazota cumba zantebare. Master fro de gari. Lever get over get temper to get over coskent over get on diria. Mend over get o. Miko pama cozanta brado pampa tengla braca sande. Rusa fanda vrigala bakashkanda vrigala bakato zanto bare madeva 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 dampa tenda glima koskento vrigering mendo vrigeto vrigeto vrigeriala mekos katanderia lavrigeto vrigala bakasantari kakoshketonderi reso fedo vrigeto vrigala bakato sonteri la bakashkadela mida vrako tombra ba sota ba prika tombra gala bakasonteri la bashira in Jesus name we say Father we confess our sins and so we clean with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, we have life. Father, please give us afresh and increasingly the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the present complete knowledge and spiritual understanding of you to grow into the perfection and fullness of Christ, to walk in love, to watch and pray always, to make us as wise as serpents, as harmless as doves, and as bold as lions, and so give us the ability of the man of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. 
once again, as we come to pray in the Spirit, we acknowledge the three persons of God that we thanksgiving in our hearts. And as we pray in the Spirit to release the power of God, we ask for mercy, grace, and help from the triune deity as we pray in the Spirit now. Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. Father, mercy, Nekote sonteri alaba, nakosa konda bamba dengla ba kashkenda vrigadoria, levrigado bakaso tondere, mendo vredo bende glema kosko tonderia, prosa frodo galaba kashatere, brika tombra galaba katombra masateria, menda vrando galaba kashania. In Jesus' name. We say, Father, we confess our sins, and so we clean with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, we have life. We love God with all our hearts, wills, minds, emotions, body, and circumstances, and we love our brethren as Christ loves them, washing their feet by forgiving, confessing, and so cleansing their sins by the blood of Jesus, asking life for them and praying for them in tongues frequently, at least once every six hours, and at every opportunity to cover for every hour throughout the day, and by this in every temptation with our thoughts and actions to help them repent, to will and do of God's good pleasure in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, as we come to pray in the Spirit, we acknowledge the three persons of God that we thanksgiving in our hearts. And as we determine to do what you have just prayed in the Spirit now, we pray to release the power of God to enable us to do what you have just confessed now. So let us pray now in faith to release the power of God. Libro da bomba cassanta brigalaba cassanta brigadura. Medio frugotom brigadem brigado. Nico satori. Lavrugado. Maca sontere. Levrugotom brigadem brigalaba coschenta brigadi. Mendo brigade. Mico pama cosata bomba zante brigadi. Made of rugotom brigalaba cassadia. Levrugado. Maca so catori alaba. Labra de bamba calaba cassonta rigado. Meco tesonta brigadin. Mendo brigado. Mendo brigalaba cosonteria. Levrugado. Maca sonta rica cascita grugade. Lavrugadom regadam brigalaba cassonta rica grugade. Mefru. Brika tumbra gala braka sonderi alaba tumbra bashade. Brika broka soko tumbra mo sonderi alaba ka tumbra bashadea. Brika tumbra gala braka sonderi alaba ya. In Jesus name. We say father, we confess our sins and so we clean with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus name, we have life. Father, please fill and cover our wills, minds, emotions, bodies and circumstances with love, joy, peace long suffering gentleness goodness faithfulness meekness meekness self control and patience so we think speak feel and act like god in every circumstance and situation throughout the day in jesus name amen once again we acknowledge the three persons of the god that we thanks giving our hearts we have the a picture of the invisible before us, God the Father, the Son, and the Lord Holy Spirit. And as we pray in the Spirit, we release the power of God to enable us to do what we have just confessed. So let us do this in faith as we pray now. We say, Lord, have mercy on us as we pray now. In Jesus' name. 
Levro que dombre que dembele me cosquento vir que do. Nico taca zum pa cuba xoxanda. Jimmy cataco zanto prama cachatara. Mateo grama na cacosque tonde brica chatara. Miga vadia la bazonta cumba sante vari. Manda vri que tombre que dereri. Me sofredo. Fada ma cosa tombre gari. Lavri que tombre que la baca sateria. Levri que tombre que la baca sonteren. Mendo vri que la baca sonteria la baca xira. Levri que tombre que la baca santa e o cacosque tonde gari. Levri que tombre que la baca sontaria la baca escadela. Nasca tomba casota cumba zatanderia. Levri que tombre que la baca atoso taca. Jama pa, jama pa, jama pa, jama pa. Makira makusa kate kari katuba kusa kate karia levri gadomba mumba kusa tumba basa tanderi medovredo pempe dengle bako sotombe rika lako sonde rusa fande giri baka shateria brika tumbra ka tumbra ma sonta la baka tembra ba brika tumbra ka la baka soteria la bashira bako sa tumbe ria la baka shateria in Jesus name in Jesus name we have life father we thank you for your mercies Lord Jesus we thank you for your grace Lord Holy Spirit sir we thank you for love and your help in Jesus name amen we say father we confess our sins and so we clean with the blood from all unrighteousness in Jesus name we have life father please give life to our spirits now in a measure that is more than enough to enable us to pray to receive life and power from God through the word to enable us to praise and to worship effectually and firmly in Jesus name in Jesus name we have life father strengthen us with all might according unto your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness as going to prayer now in jesus name we have life father please fill us afresh with the power of your holy spirit in the inner man and so cause to flow out of our spirits rivers of living water in jesus name in jesus name we have life dear lord holy spirit please come and help us now to praise and to worship the lord effectually and fervently as we come to your presence now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
offering, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bow in reverence, awe of your majesty. For truly there is no one like unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Father and our God, we worship and honor you, the great I am, the Holy One of Israel, the mighty God of Jacob, yea, the covenant-keeping God of Abraham. None can compare to you. Heavens declare your glory. The earth is full of your handiworks and the intricacies of your wisdom. We assemble tonight not unto ourselves but unto you. <clears throat> we give you a place of honor and preeminence in our midst. Lord Jesus Mighty God, Prince of Peace, the Word that was in the beginning, the second person of the Godhead, the Creator of all things. We worship and honor you, Lord Jesus, and we give you a place of honor and lordship in our midst. And Lord Holy Spirit, the giver of life, El Shaddai, the breasty one, the God that is more than enough, Jehovah Makadesh, the great sanctifier, the friend that sticks closer than a brother. We worship and honor you, Lord Holy Spirit, and give you a place of honor and control over this gathering. We assemble not unto ourselves, but unto you. We ask that you come and take your place of honor and control. Come and direct, inspire, empower our thoughts, words, and deeds. That as we assemble tonight, Lord God, it will all be to the glory of the name of Jesus, the edification of the church, and the consequent blessing of the sons of men. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We worship and welcome you in Jesus' name. To the great I am. To the great I am. Hallelujah. name we worship. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. We want to welcome everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to our uh, School of Perfection service uh, this evening. I'd like to welcome the people in your immediate neighborhood, front, left, right, and back. Say you're welcome in Jesus' name. I didn't hear you. It's good to see you tonight. <clears throat> We're going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. And by the end of the service, you're wonderful now, but you'll be more wonderful in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We also welcome our internet audience, those who are listening to us live right now, or as is usually the case, watching some recorded version of the service. You're welcome in Jesus' name. And as you fellowship with us in the Word and the, by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will use these words and this uh, his presence and His anointing to change you from inside out, making you more wonderful than you are right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Shall we bow to pray? Heavenly Father, we're so grateful. We thank you for bringing us together again tonight. We thank you because our gathering is not unto ourselves but unto you. We recognize, Lord God, your presence in our midst as we enter your word tonight. Lord God, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We're fully conscious of the limitations of the natural human mind to deliver as well as to receive your infinite wisdom that has been compressed into the written word. Consequently, we ask for fresh unction and anointing from heaven. Firstly, upon my heart and my lips, that indeed I would speak as should as an oracle of God. Secondly, upon the ears and the hearts of all who will hear me, those who are here physically, those who will hear me remotely, electronically, 
that the word will flow freely from you through me to the people to do an internal and eternal work in all of our hearts, including my own, in particular, to cause our wills to become more humble, minds to be more enlightened with revelation knowledge, emotions to be more controlled and tempered by the power of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We also pray that as I speak, the power of the Spirit of God will be released in great measure to follow these words and back them wherever they are heard and released in all the earth. Yea, power that will heal, deliver, break yokes and free men so that they will become doers of what they hear and not hearers only. We also pray for mercy to be faithful that indeed I will deliver the word with precision, redeem the time and say only what you want me to say. Bring out the treasure of this word, things new and old, as a scribe instructed unto the kingdom. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And all those in agreement with me, receiving every blessing I mentioned in that prayer in their own individual life, agreed with me individually and said, Amen. Hallelujah. This is our prayer school service, and we call it the School of Perfection, because we are teaching on Christian perfection, uh, which is the will of God uh, for the church at this time, because this age cannot close until... There is a company of God's people uh, manifested in the earth, demonstrating and manifesting the perfection, the fullness of Christ. Uh, the Bible says it in a coded form, but that's what he means when he says that, you know, this gospel, Jesus was talking about the end time. So he said, you hear of wars, rumors of wars, you know, pestilences. Oh, we're, we're in that time now, you know. He said, but the end is not yet. He very, very, was very specific. He said, the end is not yet. Then he told us some of the things that are going to happen. The, you know, uh, persecution from the nations and the church, which is a very strange thing. He just switched from that to that. And then he now said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached unto all nations for a witness. And then he said, then the end will come. And so it's that gospel of the kingdom that is going to be preached and demonstrated for a witness. A witness is something you see. You cannot witness or something you cannot see. So it's, it's more than talking. It's more than preaching. It's a demonstration of the glory of God. And that is why the, the church has to grow in the fullness of Christ to demonstrate the glory of God uh, to this generation before the end shall come. It is the preparation for this manifestation of the glory of God that these uh, classes are all about. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, it says, you know, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or, or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. In other words, the agency, the, 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 what God is going to use to perfect the church is the Word of God. And that's why these, as we teach, and as we minister the Word of God, the, the Word of God goes into our hearts, creates faith, we begin to practice it, and it begins to cleanse us. The Bible says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. It is the knowledge of those promises, the faith in them, the practice of them, that activates the power of the Holy Spirit that begins to cleanse us. Hence, these teachings. And so uh, 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 we uh, pattern our lives after the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our pattern. He's the pattern son. And we see that he was born in Bethlehem. He grew up in Nazareth and he operated with a spirit without measure with Capernaum, out of Peter's house in Capernaum. And um, our Christian life follows the same pattern. We get born again. And that's like the egg stage. And then we grow a little bit into uh, little childhood, you know, which is the caterpillar, you know, and the young manhood stage, which is typified by Jesus' growth in Nazareth. Those are what we call the silent years. Silence in our own sense, not in the sense that we don't do anything, but silence is that the glory hasn't yet come. So it hasn't yet made a noise in all the earth. Because when the glory comes, it's going to make noise. The Bible says the the the... the, the the, the, the fame of him was noised about. So we're not making noise yet because the glory hasn't yet come. When he comes, and you, but you see, once he moved into Capernaum and he began to manifest 
the power of the Spirit had mentioned. And the Bible says his fame went about. It was noised abroad. And so we're in that silent stage now. And we're trusting God. Uh, any day now, we're in the time and the season. All the prophetic signs have been fulfilled. The blood moons have come. You know, we're in the, we're in the time of the uh, uh, manifestation of the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, uh, the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, which is the love of God, the revelation of the love of God. I was teaching this on Sunday. And the practice of it and how to perfect it has come. That is not coming. It has come. We have harvested the fruit. So we're expecting the harvest now of the nations. And only the glory of God can do that. Hallelujah. You know, so uh, uh, this is a time of great expectation. It's a time of great uh, expectation. And uh, like Jesus did uh, for his disciples after the resurrection, Moses, he taught them things concerning the kingdom for 40 days. He was preparing them for the glory that was about to manifest. He didn't tell them the exact day. He just said, stay in Jerusalem. And during that time, he was teaching them. In the same way, this time we've been having, is this time of teaching and all of that in preparation for the glory that will come. And it will come suddenly, just like it did on the day of Pentecost. It was sudden. Uh, just like even in the ministry of Jesus, it was sudden for him. He started, you know, miracles started in his life. He, I mean, he's always had, he had always lived in the supernatural, just like us. We live in supernatural now. We see miracles every day. Amen. We pray. God answers our prayers. We see. We live constantly in the supernatural. You know, so that's not a big deal. But the glory did not manifest until Cana of Galilee. And he himself didn't know. That morning when he woke up, he didn't know it was that day. He got up in the morning. His mom said, oh, some of our, our kin folks, some of our relatives are having a wedding in uh, Cana. Will you and your the friends come because some of his friends were staying with him, Peter, James, and John, and you know the, the first the first disciples that they, they were staying with him. You know, <laughs> and uh, Jesus said, "Sure, sure, let's all go." <laughs> you know, the last thing on his mind was the glory. He he knew it was in that season, but the last place he was expecting it was at the Cana of Galilee marriage. He was he was actually looking towards the feast in Jerusalem for Passover. You know, and uh, it's very interesting that in that particular incident, no day is recorded. I mean, we know the day, but we don't know. What I mean is that the day did not have any prophetic significance. It was it did not fall, fall on a particular feast day. It did not fall on a, it, on a new moon. It, there was nothing uh, spiritually recorded that gave significance to that day in Cana of Galilee. And I believe it's going to be exactly the same with us. That's why I kept telling people, don't miss church. You never know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Even we, the pastors, don't know. God's keeping these cards very close to his chest. Just like he did for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's why he's our pattern. If the Lord Jesus did not know, <laughs> thank God we're growing spiritually, but you will never outgrow Jesus. Praise the Lord. If the Lord Jesus didn't know, you and I won't know. It will just come suddenly so we are, we are, we are, we, our hearts are in great expectancy i'm expecting any day now it might be tomorrow <laughs> it might be tonight you know only god knows amen but i know we're in the season that's the important thing we don't know the day or the hour but we know the season and so we're we're being prepared uh using and that's why we're teaching like jesus was teaching his people during those 40 days uh this word of god that will cleanse us and prepare us, you know, uh, uh, to be uh, part of that glorious church using these uh, seven pillars of wisdom, the fear of God, which is honesty and humility of heart, uh, uh, praying in the spirit at two levels, praying in tongues for communion and fellowship, and praying with all kinds of prayer, which includes praying with groanings and travail uh, for Christ to be formed in us, you know, then uh, binding the devil. The fourth principle is speaking God's word. I call it confession of the word, meditating God's word, saying God's word in our hearts, you know, uh, with a uh, um, view to practicing it, 
Then the fifth principle is practicing of God's word, actually doing it physically. And then the, uh, that's the sixth principle. And then the seventh one is fasting and living a fasted life. You know, fasting is very important. You can't get into this perfection thing without having a, a habit of regular fasting. You know, I'm not talking about long 40-day fast. I'm talking about fasting as a daily, as a habit. And I'll call it, Jesus, I didn't say this. Jesus appeared to Kenneth Hagen, you know, you know, which was part of the preparation for the end time. And he said to him, he said, you know, Kenneth Hagen used to fast twice a, twice a week, you know, and then the rest of the days he would eat he would, he would, he, with a vengeance. So Jesus said to him, and you know, the Lord just has a great sense of humor, you know. He said to him, he said, yeah, you're called to be commended. He said, he said, but you know, you eat, you fast twice a week, and then the rest of the week you eat like a hog. <laughs> Jesus actually said that. <laughs> you know, the Lord has a sense of humor. You know, and he said, he said, I'd rather you live a fasted life and you keep the flesh under all the time. That is, you eat, but you don't overeat. You know, and uh, by the grace and the mercy of God, we've been practicing that. I've been practicing that for the last, oh, almost 40 years. I eat. You know, but I, I don't overeat, you know, and, you know, usually in the early hours, I don't eat in the mornings. <laughs> I got that from Ecclesiastes chapter 10. He says, so, he says, woe to thee, O land, when thy princes eat in the morning. I can never forget, I first described that scripture in 1981. I said, God, you want to take my breakfast too? <laughs> I said, that's all right too. Now, it doesn't mean I don't eat at all. What I mean is I... I'll either take you some fluids or something, but nothing heavy, you know. I've discovered now you have to keep your metabolism working properly so you're healthy and all of that. And then maybe during the day I'll have a soup or something. So very, very light things, you know, like what Daniel said, no pleasant bread, you know. And then later on in the evenings, days when I'm fasting and I eat, and I try and eat a little bit early, not too late, you know, and all of that. And I'm still alive. It hasn't killed me. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? Yeah, but I find that it keeps me sharp spiritually. That's why I can get up early in the morning. My mind is clear, you know. So when I pray in the mornings and all that, I mean, I, I can't imagine myself eating heavily in the mornings. Because that's the time I pray and I talk to God. So that extra time, I use it in prayer and, and the Word and all of that. And then I download what God wants me from heaven. And then, you know, with that, I'm equipped spiritually for the rest of the day to deal with all the challenges. Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So that's how the Lord's been dealing with us, you know. And so we're using Jesus as our model in our last lesson. We stopped in Luke chapter 19. And uh, I think we stopped in uh, verse 27, somewhere in there. Luke 19, uh, we stopped where he was talking about the parable of the talents. And, you know, uh, uh, Jesus is, says a noble man. They, they, they thought Jesus was going to, the coming of the Lord was in, in, immediate. We think the same way too, so many times. You know, you, interestingly, Pastor G, the, the church has exactly the same mindset, only in, in, a, in a different direction. That's why you find that the average Christian anywhere thinks Jesus is going to come tomorrow. Stay rapturable. Have you heard that before? You know, they, we, we all think, you know, the, the general mindset of the church, and it's a wrong mindset. Let, let's, let me correct that. I don't want to be too harsh on them. It's an incomplete mindset. It's not wrong. Sure, the rapture is going to happen. Sure, Jesus is coming, but it's not tomorrow. And I said, I've been saying this for years, and I'm going to keep saying it. It's just that I keep reducing the time. Amen? And it's not, it's not going to be in the next five years. It's not going to be in the next 10 years. It's not going to be in the next 15 years. It's not going to be in the next 20 years. I'll stop there. I won't get to 30. Praise the Lord. You know, but, you know, he's coming. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, just like the Jews thought he was going to come immediately to set up a physical kingdom, you know, and deal with the Romans and become a, a deliverer like David, because he's the son of David, isn't he? And David dealt with the Philistines and, you know, so they were expecting a military redeemer, savior, who would come 
and remove Pilate and remove the Roman government and set up the government of God. That's what they expected. You know, and everything they were believing for was true. It was just that they, they, had, they, had, they had shifted it 1,000 years, 2,000 years ahead of time. The same thing happens to us today. Everybody's thinking the rapture is coming, but many times we've shifted it 30, 40 years ahead. It, it is coming, but it cannot come unto this manifestation. This glory of God has to be manifest, and we don't just stop there. We don't just manifest. We now make disciples in every ethnos. Uh, that's not a job you can do in one day. It takes time to get people born again. Then it takes time to teach them. It takes time for them to grow. So when you put, when you factor all of that in, that's why you can see a minimum is 20 years. So if the manifestation started tonight, <laughs> we still have about 20 something years down the road. You know, that's why we're, we, we believe that it's going to be sometime in, in here now, you know, with all the signs that are in. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, we got, I mean, if you go to, I, I was reading in the, uh, 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 the news today, you know, Pakistan and India are bombing each other, you know, and all of that. All that place, we have to have disciples in all of the ethnos. If you take them like India, for example, India has 1.2 billion. China is about 1.4. Now watch this. In India, they all don't speak the same language. You just think he's Indian. He's not all Indian. The guys in, 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 in they, 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 I don't know all the names of all the different places, but you know, the guys in northern India are different from the guys in southern India. They don't speak the same language. You know, there's some guys in the east of India, they speak a different language. There are guys from, you know, in another place, you know, they, they speak a different language. They all, they, even in India, you've got different ethnic groups. It's a multi-ethnic, multicultural society. Now, a majority of them are Hindus, but you, even among the Indians, you have Muslims. That's why they had to divide India into Pakistan and India after the independence in 1947. Then Pakistan is another, is another, they say, even in Pakistan too, you have different, different kinds of people. They speak, you know, they, they don't all speak the same language. You know, and, and all kinds of, you know, things. And then you got China, and now God, you, you got good old Nigeria here. We've got about 500 different ethnic groups. In Nigeria alone, that we speak different languages. I did my youth coin Cross River State, you know. I can never forget... You know, in, in Cross River State, you go 10 kilometers, the language changes. I was, I was serving in a place called Ecom. You know, if you're coming from Calabar and you're going up, you go through, you, you go through Akankwa, then you get to Ububra, then you get to Ugep, then you now get to um, Ecom, then from Ecom you get to Ogoja, from Ogoja you get to Ubudu, you know, and all of that. Every place is a different language. The languages are complete. They don't understand each other. They don't have their native dialect. They may all speak ethic, some of them, not all of them, you know, but they can't understand each other. Now, in each of those places, we must have disciples. I'm not talking about believers. I'm talking about disciples. I'm not talking about bare born again. The, the, one big mistake the, the church has always made and that's what's not made us as serious as we should be, is we think that this commission is a commission of evangelization. It's not. It's a commission of discipleship. And watch this. You cannot disciple people if you are not discipled. You cannot give what you don't have. That is why we must first of all have a disciple perfect church that will now disciple the nations. You can see that, you know, even, even our own discipleship is still a process. So by the time God finishes with us, that's going to be one part of the job. Then go now use those to uh, finish with to now get the other people. Get, you can see it's not going to be in two weeks. Hello, somebody. You see, when you understand God's word, you understand why these things are so. You know, so it's, it, uh, you know, we, we, we've, got, we've got a job to do. And that's why we're, we're, we're sharing all these things. So he said to them, he said, you know, uh, 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 um, the kingdom of God is like a nobleman. He goes on a far journey, which is like Jesus, and then he'll return. Never say he'll return. Okay, turn to your neighbor and say, the day of his return is upon us. 
Okay, now when he comes back, when he was going, he gives into everybody the same talent. The Bible calls it the measure of faith. He's given to every man. He, it's not a different measure. All of us had the same measure. Now, I gave one interpretation to us on last week. But you know, Revelation is continuous and progressive. Can you believe between last week and this week, I got something new? <laughs> it's true. It's not new. When I, when I explain, you see that it's not new. It's just a different perspective, you know, but still the same word of God. Now, when he came back, you know, and he began to take stock of the people, one person had got 10 talents. He gave him one, he produced 10, he used it to produce 10. Another person produced five. Another person kept it in a napkin. Then there were some people who said, this man will not rule over us. You know, and God gave me even greater insight in that. You know, I was explaining last week that you know, when, a lot of people want Jesus as Savior, but they don't want him as Lord. But, you know, if you continue with that, now not everybody does that to the glory of God, you know. But if people continue with that, you know, it ultimately leads them to backsliding. That's why, you know, these are scriptures people don't like to hear, but they're the truth, you know, and it makes them uncomfortable, especially people who are in that area. You know, when they hear, <sighs> you know, that's why he said, I would rather that you're cold or hot. He said that, but you are lukewarm. Now, he said, if you're, and I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. So, the, you see, a person who doesn't make him Lord, if he, if he doesn't change and continue, he'll get colder and colder and colder. And the time, whew, that's why when he comes back, he said, these are my enemies, let them slay them. Those is indicative of those who go to hell. The guy who has one talent, now, let, let, let me give you a new perspective. Ten, I, was, I, I went back home and I was praying, you know, meditating on these things. You know, even I listen to my own messages. I don't know if you know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm not a hypocrite. I, I, I meditate, you know, because I make sure that I myself, who I'm preaching, I'm doing what I'm saying. Because God's not going to use a different standard for me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so, as I was meditating... The Lord just, he blew this word up to me. I never saw it in that context. He said, 10. He said, what is 10? He said, the 10 commandments. He said, the guy who used his faith, that one talent, to get, to keep the 10 commandments. Now, you don't keep 10 commandments, you keep one, love. But when you keep love, so the guy who uses his talent to perfect the love of God is the guy who gets the 10 cities. The guy who uses that one talent to walk in love, but he doesn't, he doesn't stretch it <coughs> up to the ten. He stretches some. That's why he used the word five. There will be some who will be six. There will be some who will be seven. There will be some who will be, you know, he just used that one as a, mid, just as a sample. You know, God is so smart. He will say very deep things in a very simple way. You know, so that's why every man is going to be given a reward according to his work. So the guy uses his, 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 his one talent, uh, his, his, one, his faith, his measure of faith to keep the word of God. But he doesn't keep it like 100% of the time. He gives it like 70%. He'll get seven. The other guy, the guy who does it 50%, will get five. The guy who does three, you get three. Then there's a the guy who does one. <laughs> it's the same talent. He doesn't. And the Lord gave me this understanding. He said, you know what that one represents? He says, he never began to use spiritual law, that faith, to keep the commandments. What I was teaching on Sunday about forsaking sins of omission. So what he did was that he did not backslide. He didn't leave Jesus, but he lived just like an ordinary, like a good unbeliever. A good unbeliever does not keep the word of God by spiritual law. He keeps it by the law of conscience. The same law of conscience that he had that got him born again, that's where he still is. So he's still the same, he's the same talent. He kept it in a napkin. You know, it's a great truth. You know, that was a problem with this guy, the rich young ruler. Until he got born again, he, the church tells us it was Barnabas. Until he got born again later on in the Acts of the Apostles. When Jesus saw him, he said, he said, 
you, he said, uh, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandments. He said, which one? He said, you know it now. Honor your father and your mother. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. And he told the truth. He said, I have kept these things from my youth. How many people know that there are people who are not born again who do things? Who do that? Oh, there are many. I who speak to you. Now, I wasn't, I wasn't a saint. <laughs> Don't let me, you know, I, I, I did a lot of bad things as a young man. But I was a good person, in quotes. It's the truth. I, it's not as if I didn't tell lies, but I didn't tell lies normally. <laughs> Do you understand? I didn't. There were a lot of things. Well, looking back now, I now realize that I was just, you know, he says, the Gentiles do by nature. The thing, that was what I was doing. You know, I remember I had some classmates, uh, some, some roommates, uh, when I was in part two, I think it was. Uh, here in UI. They had come from the East. This is 1975, 76. Do you understand? The Civil War just happened. The Civil War just ended in 1970. So they were, they were older than us. These are guys who went back, you know, they, they, they fought in Biafra. Then they came back to school. You know, and thank God for General Gowan, you know, and that reconciliation. So many of them, they got, they got you know, scholarships and they give them bursary and things like that. So some of them were, were not very financially well-to-do. They were struggling. They were not poor, but they were struggling. So the guy who was one of my roommates... You know, his name was Wachuku. He had come from the East. You know, he was doing political science. You know, he was a, he was a socialist. That was where I learned all my Karl Marx and everything from. So we used to talk and argue. So he, 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 had, he had a friend, you know, who didn't have a place to stay. So he now asked me, he said, do I mind if the guy squats? I said, it's okay. And we all became friends, you know. And, you know, I would help them. You know, I would, you know, buy things into the room. We'll all eat it together. You know, we will, you know, I, I was by the grace. and the, When I look back now, it's the mercy of God. Oh. It's not because I was, you know, it was just the law of conscience. So I was, I was doing all those things. So I remember, you know, he, you know, what you could tell me, you know, he said to me, he said, Johnson, he said, you are a good bourgeois. <laughs> He said, hey, bourgeois. We used to argue about, you know, capitalism and all of that. He said, he said, but Johnson, he said, you are a good bourgeois. You are a good bourgeois. Praise the Lord. You know, but, you know, I, 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 so there are people like that. Now, if you get born again, you're supposed to move from there. From, a, from just being a good unbeliever, you know, who is obeying the law of conscience, to somebody who is using spiritual law to perfect the love of God. So the guy who had the one talent, he kept it inside the napkin. He didn't use it. He just, you know, so the same thing he had, he still had it. So he said, take it from him and give it to the guy who has 10. And that's why his reward, he didn't get any reward. He was saved, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. As I have to interpret scripture with scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. Quickly go there and come back. Is that 15 or verse 13? Yeah, there it is. No, no. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Said, if any man's work shall be burned. So that guy who had one talent, he didn't, he didn't do anything. You know, he will suffer loss. What did he lose? He lost it. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. He didn't go to hell. But he lost his reward. You know, this glory that is coming is going to make clear the kind of work all of us are doing. Because it will not be hidden anymore. Amen? When the glory comes, those who are perfecting the love of God, using their faith and all that, you will see them carrying the glory. Those who, uh, and then there will be different levels. You know, uh, there will be borrowed anointing and all that. And those who don't get anything, there will be nothing. <laughs> Hello? And everybody will see it. He says, the day shall declare it. For every man's work, it shall be of what sort it is. He said, they that who have built with gold, silver, I said, they will receive a reward. He said, those who have, you know, he says, they will suffer loss, but they will be saved. So far. But those who backslide, who said, we will not have this man rule of us, they will go to hell. He said, those my enemies that will, I said, bring them, I will slay them. Spiritually speaking. You know, so, 
We saw that in our last lesson. You know, so today, um, verse 28, let's all read. This is a triumphal entry. This is what, <laughs> religion is a terrible thing, Pastor G. This is what God Palm Sunday. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, anyway, it's all right too. You know, it's true they had palms anyway. So it is Palm Sunday. You know, we're so, you know, we get so involved. When you start walking with God and you start walking in the spirit like we're doing by the grace and the mercy of God, you know, when it's Palm Sunday, I don't even know it's Palm Sunday. <laughs> you know, it doesn't even register. It, those, those religious events have no... And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending to Jerusalem. Don't you know say, when you're going to a place of revelation, you're always going up. Ascending to Jerusalem. Ascending to Jerusalem, symbolically speaking, is a place of revelation. You know, you can, you can, you can look at our Christian lives using Israel geographically. You've got Israel, you've got Jerusalem, you've got Zion. Zion is the perfect church. Jerusalem is a place where you get the revelation of it, and then you now move into Zion. Most Christians never even leave Israel. They never get to Jerusalem. This is they were ascending to Jerusalem. I'm talking symbolically, prophetically. Hello, somebody. Although this was literal. This was geographically really literal. And it came to pass, when it was come nigh, I didn't hear you folks, to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the quitch, at your entering, you shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. Verse 32. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. Let me just stop there. <laughs> Don't try this. <laughs> but I, I want, there's an important lesson I want to see here. Look at divine provision. You see, we often think of provision in terms of money. He needed a coat. He didn't go and buy one. He only needed it, and I'm going to show that to you in Scripture now, to fulfill prophecy. In, he, he just borrowed it just for an hour or two. I'm sure after it, he told them to take the coat back to the people who owned it. Amen. What did he want to do with it? He was, he was going to die the next week anyway. You understand? This was, uh, this was Palm Sunday. He was going to be crucified on Good Friday. He didn't need the coat for the five days. You know, it was just for that time as he was entering Jerusalem. But the point I want us to learn is this. Many times, when God wants to provide for you, he may not provide for you in terms of cash. He may just give you wisdom and favor with men to provide what you need at that time. This is what happened here. He gave the Lord Jesus a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, about the fact that the cult was there. Okay, then he told the guys, go and get the colt. You know, he said, he described it to them, you know, he said, if you read it, I think it's in the, in, the, in, the, in the Gospel of John, he says it's a place where the two ways parted, you know. And, and he, he said, okay, as we're entering the city now, um, near Bethphage and Bethany, there's a, there's a small donkey, uh, it's colt, you know, it's tied. When you get there, loose it and bring him to me. Because the prophet must not enter Jerusalem on his feet. In order to fulfill the scripture. We're going to look at scripture in a minute. You understand? Ordinarily, when he went into, into Jericho, he was walking. Remember blind Bartimaeus? And, uh, and, and uh, what's the other guy we, checked about, we talked about the other day? Um, the tax collector, Zacchaeus. Jesus was walking. But now, as he was going to enter Jerusalem, that the scripture might be fulfilled. With the prophet had spoken, he could not go in on his legs. 
he had to go in on a colt. So he said, oh, now how many people know Jesus had money? Jesus had money. There was so much of it, Judas could steal and the boys wouldn't know. <laughs> Are you listening to me? But he, he did it, he, he, you know, and we have to be like the God. Sometimes God won't give you money to get what he will. He will just give you favor. So he, he just gave him wisdom, the knowledge that that colt was there. Number two, he gave him favor with the owners. So he said to them, he said, go and get the colt. When you get there, lose it. He said, if anybody asks you, tell them the Lord has need of him. And that's exactly what happened. How, whether Jesus knew the people before, we don't know. Very likely. Because uh, the reason why I say so is this. is Bethany. Bethany is the town of Lazarus, Martha. And he used to go there a lot. He used to go there a lot. In fact, throughout this one week, you know, he was sleeping in Bethany. So it's probably people he knew. It's probably somebody he knew. And he knew that that cult was there. So he told them, he said, when you get there, if they ask you, you know, when you say the Lord, it's not just anybody, it's the Lord. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you know, uh, I have need of it. You know, and, and they say, oh, sure, sure, sure. If it's Jesus, you can take it. You know, and of course, maybe a few days, by the time they entered Jerusalem that very evening, you know, and he was going to come back, they probably came back with the colts and gave it back to the owners. Hello, somebody. But what does that teach us? It teaches you that sometimes... You know, God will just give you favor. You just know this person has this thing and say, look, ask that person, he'll give it to you. Use it for what you want to use it and give it back. Sometimes we're so materialistic. We're, we, we, we think everything in terms of money. Sometimes God will just provide for you by wisdom and favor. Just need a favor with those people and the wisdom, the knowledge of that thing was there. It was used for the purpose and it was returned. It's not so much, it's not every time we need to accumulate things. Especially when the use of those things are just temporary. You know, sometimes you just don't need, you don't need, what you need is to get what you need done, done. And once it's done, that's the important thing. You don't necessarily need to possess the thing. Hello, somebody. I've learned that, I'm still learning it. You know, may, sometimes if I go to a place, you know, I just find out, you know, maybe I have a friend or somebody I know there, you know, and I can get what I need. I don't have to go and start spending money again and buy. Sometimes it's even, it's even bad management of resources. You know, spending money unnecessarily, you know, especially when God has provided for you. God has provided for you. Say, okay, oh, somebody just offer you, oh, this is available. Okay, fine. I'll use it, you know, after I'm going there for two or three days. I don't, you know, there's no point. It's just like the Lord Jesus. Another point has just come to me. You know, I said it earlier on. Just use Peter's house as his headquarters. How many of you know Jesus could buy a house? He could buy a hundred if he wanted. I want to remove a completely silly religious something from here. Jesus was not poor at all. This, uh, you know, all these silly pictures we see in the religious shops. You know, Jesus, you know, you know, meek and lowly, he doesn't have any money, he's poor. It's a lie. You, there's no way you could be like Jesus who kept the commandments. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently say, the Lord shall go, bless you. Jesus was seriously blessed. He just chose to live a simple life. Though he was, he was rich. He was, you know, he, he just chose to live. A, he used most of the money for the poor. That's why he told Judas, you know, they, th they thought he was asking Judas to go and give something to the poor. He used to give a lot to the poor, you know, and, and help people and all of that. But he lived a very, and you know, you, 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 a poor person doesn't have a treasurer. How many of you here have a treasurer? You don't even have the money to pay the treasurer. You know, a treasurer has full-time staff. Hello, somebody. You know, he's only, he's only rich people or corporations that have accountants. <laughs> How much is your money that you need an accountant? I, are you following my thinking? So by the time a person has a treasurer, you know he has a lot of money. The money, a lot of money was coming in. Praise the Lord. That's why he needed a treasurer. And that's why he was really, there was a lot of money coming in. 
you know, uh, for his ministry and everything. So when he got there, he said to them, look, um, there's no point going to buy a colt. He could have asked them to go to the sheep market, go and buy a colt. Hello? What a waste of resources. So he said, no, there's some guys who have one down there. Go there, lose it. If they ask you, says me, they'll le they release him. I'll use him and then we'll, we'll send it back. Praise the Lord. You know, Peter's house. He could have bought a house. He said, I'm going to live here for three years. Makes no sense. I'm going to, yeah. Between the age of 30 and 33. I'm going to be here for three years. There's no point buying a house. Let's use Peter's house. Use Peter's house, you know, and, and Peter's house was a headquarters, and they move in and out. They went to different places. They'll come back. They stay in hotels or inns, you know. Sometimes they stay in people's houses, like Zacchaeus's house, you know. And they, they'll come back. And, 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 you know, another thing you need to know is because Jesus, had, he, he, because he was rich and he had a lot of resources, minimum, when Jesus was moving around, there will be at least 12, 20, 50 people with him. You know how much it costs to feed all those people? Hello? Yeah, he never, all the time he had the 12, they were always with him. Then there was the 70. Do you know how much it costs to feed 70 people? A lot of money. You know, and, and he could afford it. Whenever they were with him, they, they never lacked anything. When he needed to, he multiplied the bread, but didn't do that every day. Hello, somebody. And I was like, when, once, it, once the spirit that measure comes, <laughs> I won't break on. <laughs> <No. laughs> ah, <laughs> praise the Lord. Eh, the Lord can multiply bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, one bread at the sardine jet. <laughs> Some people will come to church only because of that miracle. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, multiply bread, lady. <laughs> ah, but uh, miss service here. Yeah. <laughs> May God have mercy on us. You can see why God can't trust us with that kind of power. <laughs> yeah. You know. It, and you know, in Jesus' time, was the same thing. They came back and said, but Jesus said, you people, you, know? <laughs> you didn't come because of the word of God. <laughs> you came because you ate bread. And they were waiting for a duplication of that miracle. Ah, bread. I just know you do go. Praise the Lord. You know, and if you're not spiritually mature and your character is not formed, if, you're, if you had that kind of power, you would play to the gallery. If it was a lot of our guys today, they would have given them the bread the next day. They would have, ah, I was, ah, it's today. I joke, okay. Let's say the grace. Oh, yeah, oh Lord. <laughs> they say, this man is the great king. You, 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 you can now see why God doesn't trust us with that power if that character is not. Because the person that has that kind of power must only do what God tells him to do. He must not play to the gallery. He must not try and just find popularity among men. Yes, he did it the first day because they were all, you know, they had been with him for three days. They were faint. He said, look, sit them down. Let's give them food. Then he gave them food. Then he said, look, you guys go. I go. They, they went. He went to go and pray. Walked on the water, you know, and took a boat to the next side. By the time the morning, the guys too are taking more boats. They came to the other side. They said, ah, he said, Lord, when did you come here? He said, he said, you are not looking for me because of the miracles. You are looking because of the bread. Then he didn't give them bread. He did not play to the gallery. That's only true of bread. It's also true of healing. It's true of a lot of things. You see, so, so people come to church because of some physical or material need. And yes, we do meet those needs. But you see, you can't keep pandering to that. We have to teach you how to use your faith and how to grow spiritually. So there are some days I won't pray for you. Because God did not say I should pray for you on that day. What you need is the word of God. And how to use your faith, not another supply. Like uh, Papa Kelly Vernon said, you know, man-centered, need-oriented, entertainment-based. If you're not careful, you, you keep pandering to that, that's how your ministry will become. It will become man-centered, need-oriented, entertainment-based. You keep doing things 
just to get the crowd. Instead of giving them the word of God. Jesus didn't do that and we're not going to do it. I didn't hear you. Okay. So he loosed the colt. All right. And he said the Lord has need of him. Now, like I said, look at verse 35. And they brought him, him the colt, <laughs> to Jesus. I didn't hear you. And they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus thereon. I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to contrast two pictures here. Thank God for the, uh, the Bible talks about <coughs> the whole counsel of God. That's why God gave us the whole Bible, the book of Revelation. This is just his first coming. He's coming into Jerusalem, you know, as the Lamb of God. That's going to be slain. The foundation of God. He comes in meekly. He comes in on a coat. When he's coming the second time, he's coming on a white horse. Contrast this with Revelation. He says, with the armies of God behind him. Hallelujah. And he had uh, something on his side whose name is called the word of God. And his eyes are like a flame of fire. Contrast that with this. This was the first coming. He's coming humbly. Meek. But next time he's coming, he's coming as a conqueror. Hello, somebody. Amen. The so and, and I can't shell him in I just got a, I just got a word. You know, as surely as the first coming happened, be sure the second one will happen. Just as the scripture was fulfilled for this first one, so it will be fulfilled for the second one. Hallelujah. And they brought him. And as they as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Hello? It's very interesting today. What we do is spread, say, uh, we spread palm. Why do you spread your clothes? If you want to be really scriptural. <laughs> on Palm Sunday, don't just take palm. Take your clothes and put it on the ground. Then you'll be fulfilling the scripture. <laughs> you see how religion is? Uh, yeah, 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 it's not just palm. You know, let's say it's Palm Sunday. You see everybody with palm. So take your clothes, put it on the ground. And let the donkey match it. In other words, God's not interested in you doing Palm Sunday. <coughs> Sorry. Ouch. <laughs> Hello. He wants you to understand the spiritual significance rather than going out and, you know, going with palm, palm fronts. That's not the important thing. And he was come nigh, and they spread their clothes in the way. Let's just stop there. Look at Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah, you see this scripture. And this is what makes you afraid of God. You know, and it is scriptures like this that let you know that the Bible is the word of God. When did Zechariah prophesy this? Look at it. Let's read it. Rejoice greatly. I didn't hear you. Oh, daughter of Zion, shout. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Oh, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, riding upon an ass and upon a colt. The fall of an ass. Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. I, I didn't check the exact, but you know, you can go back and do it. I'm sure it's a minimum of 500, maybe 700, if not 1,000. Because this is Zechariah. You know, this, you know, I haven't even got to Malachi yet. Malachi is 400 years. Fa, uh, you know, not, not 400, it's 430. Because Jesus was born 400 years. Then the, you add the 30, and this is probably 33. So by the time you add, Zechariah is probably 100 years or 200 years before Malachi. You're looking at 600, 700 years, if not more. Hello, somebody. Yet, look at the scripture. You cannot... Now, that's why that's why we ourselves, we need to know the Bible. We, not only the Bible, we need to know the prophetic scriptures and we need to know the times and seasons of their fulfillment. 
So that when we want to do something, we now know that, ah, this is the time for this. Jesus, immediately he got, as he was coming into Jerusalem, he, this scripture came to his mind. So he knew, I can't walk into Jerusalem like I walked into Jericho. I can't walk into Jerusalem like I walked into Jericho. I have to write a quote that what Zechariah said might come to pass. So he said, go and get a quote. If he had walked in, this scripture would not have been fulfilled. Now, it's good to know the Bible and it's good to know the Holy Spirit. Is this the first time he went to Jerusalem? He's been going to Jerusalem since he was a kid. When he was 12 years old, did he say they should get a coat? Hello, somebody. When he went to Jerusalem, <coughs> where, uh, uh, after the, 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 the miracle in Cana of Galilee, you know, and went to the, did he take a coat? There was a time for the coat. That's why you need to understand the times and the seasons. There was a time. That it was, this was the last entry before his crucifixion. So this scripture had a fulfillment for a particular season. He went to Jerusalem many times, but not on the coat. But when the last time came for the fulfillment of this scripture, he understood the time and the season said, get a coat now. We need to do the same. Sometimes there are some scriptures that are true. But that's not the time for it. And one of the things why we miss God many times is that we know the scripture. We know there's a prophetic scripture, but many times we miss the season and the time. That's why we need prophets. That's why we need this kind of prophetic ministry and teaching so that you can know the season in which that prophetic word is to come to pass. Simply because it is true does not mean it will come to pass in any season. It has to, it has to be fulfilled in the season for its fulfillment. And it takes revelation. Online revelation. Or at the time, it was online. As you are approaching, as he left Jericho, I was approaching, ah! He ascended to Jerusalem as he wanted to go to Bethany and saying, Ah, this is the time. Go and get that coat. Go and get that coat. It's a big lesson for us to learn. Same thing is happening to us today. You know, we see all kinds of scriptures in the Bible, you know, prophetic scriptures, and they're true. You know, but I need to know the time. That's why we need to understand the times and the seasons. That's why we need prophetic teaching. That's why you need to know the word of God. When you know the word of God and you understand times and seasons, you will know when to plug in a particular scripture at a particular time. Hello, somebody. All right. And so here he comes. And he enters Jerusalem with great fanfare on this colt. And something interesting happens. They begin to, you know, they get, they, they get the palm trees. The, 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 the. And when he was come nigh... Verse 37, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Remember that scripture, it says shout. In Zechariah, he says rejoice, thy king cometh. He says shout. Go back, go, go back, go back, go back to go back to Zechariah. Go back to Zechariah 9 9 and compare it. They didn't know they, didn't know they were fulfilling just like you and I. You, it's just like you and I. Just like there are many times we're fulfilling prophetic scripture and we don't realize it. It's that good morning in Jesus. Just start praying. You don't you don't understand that in the day of his power, his people shall be willing, and they will join at the day of break. At the break of day. That's what he said. I shared it with you on Sunday. He said they will join. He said your young people with vigor of youth. Whether it's young person or something with the vigor of youth. They will go early in the morning. He says they, they, with holy array in the dew of the morning. He's talking about 
early in the morning, getting up, putting on the whole armor of God and praying, we are fulfilling prophetic scripture. Now! Psalm 110. The rod of strength out of Zion. And we are ruling through in the midst of our enemies. I got good news. If verse 2 and 3 are being fulfilled, then the verses behind are also going to be fulfilled. So this is the time where we're going to deal with kings. Hello, Nigeria. So don't let what has happened bother you. God is in control. We just need to keep praying. God, yeah, it's, it's far from over. It's just begun. Yeah, you stay here. Let me, let, let, let. I, I love this scripture. Castle Mengra. Yeah, you look at it, verse 2. Rule it is, verse 23. Verse 3. Thy people shall be willing. Where this scripture is being fulfilled now. With good morning, Jesus. And when we were when we started, we didn't know we were we we did not go to this scripture and say, Oh, we want to do this scripture. We just started doing it. It is as we're doing it, we now realize that we're fulfilling scripture. Now, as this is happening, verse 4, I want to give you good news about Nigeria and the nations. The Lord has sworn it will not repent. You know where Melchizedek priesthood, how many people know that? Go and review my message on the spiritual sacrifice of the race. We're fulfilling that. Next verse, verse 5. Now, so this is coming after the other one. As a consequence of that prayer of verse 2 and 3, you know, and, and ruling in the midst of our enemies, the next thing that's going to happen is that the Lord will strike at thy right and will strike through kings in this day of his wrath. So this, this praying and all of that is a precursor. It is what is coming before this other one. Hallelujah. So don't worry about the elections. Don't worry. God is in control. Keep praying for the president. Keep praying for the, Just pray for the nation and pray in tongues. You don't know what you're praying. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Shake it out. <laughs> Let God take care of the details in tongues. Don't worry, don't fret not yourself because of the evil man. Don't worry, don't disturb yourself. This, ah, da, 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 mm, 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 mm. Just pray. That's why we're, our hand will not be slack in battle. Prayers will not, will not decrease now. It's going to increase. We're going to strike through. Okay. Give, the, the, give, give, give this to me in the, deal, in, the, in the message Bible. I like it. In, in, sometimes I don't like message, but sometimes I like it. You know, so that is just a paraphrase. The Lord stands true to your side, crushing kings in his terrible wrath. Next verse, verse 6. Bringing judgment. This, 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 is the, this, is, this is the message. Bringing judgment on the nations. You can see the consequence of that prayer of verse 2 and 3. This is what it's going to bring about. Handing out convictions wholesale. Crushing opposition across the white earth. Talk about the manifestation of the sons of God. It's going to overcome all the persecution of the nations. Persecution will come, but it will be overcome. Watch it. Crushing opposition across the white earth. Verse 7. It's good stuff, man. The king maker put his king on the throne. The true king rules with head held the kingship is not determined in Washington. It's not determined in London. It's not determined in Paris. And it's certainly not determined in Brussels. <laughs> another message for another day. Another message for another day. Are you listening to me? And it certainly is not determined in Abuja. It's determined in Zion. The true king, the kingmaker, He's, he's, he's God himself. He will put the king on the throne. And then the true king. It means there are some people, they are kings, but they are not the true kings. Next verse. Hallelujah! I give thanks to God with everything I've got. Wherever good people gather and in the congregation. Next verse. Okay, we finished Psalm 110. So, that's it. You can see 
And incidentally, Pastor G, this hands on ten is not in my notes. I'm teaching prophetically. What I was saying the other day, you see, I didn't say thus said the Lord, but see, it just flowed. It's a, it's a speaking forth, it's a prophetic word. You know, so all the good money, Jesus, is just a beginning. And what is going to come out of it is going to be the discipline of the nations. The breaking and the ruling of the nations that will now lead to the discipleship of the nations. What I was speaking about earlier, places like India, China, that up till now, Pakistan, that are now closed, will open. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory. They didn't let him before, but they will now let him. Because he will break in sunder the bars of iron. Do you see how the scriptures? But where did all this come from? Knowing the prophetic scriptures and knowing the times and the seasons. So we are in the season now. Is it clear? Let's get back to Matthew. Exactly. Let's get back to Matthew 19. Luke 19. Thank you. So he was coming down, and the whole multitude began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. They were fulfilling scripture. Because the scripture in Zechariah, let go, 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 to, go to Zechariah. Go to Zechariah 9.9. 9. That's a nice scripture. Very easy to remember. 9.9. 9. Rejoice! That's exactly what they were doing. Greatly, not ordinarily, greatly. Oh, daughter, shout! Now let's go back to... Uh, Luke 19, verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude was, I began to what? Rejoice. They, they were fulfilling the scripture to the letter. And praise God with a what? He said, told them to shout. That's what Zechariah 9 said. For all the mighty works they had seen. Let me just put something in here. This incident, this thing happened just a few days after he had raised Lazarus from the dead. If you read the account in the Gospel of John, which is where I've been reading my own personal Bible reading, you know, I think I read it yesterday or day before yesterday, you know, you, you, you can see he had just raised and so many of the people gone, went, were there. So it was these some of the people who came to Jerusalem because everybody comes to Jerusalem for Passover. So the whole multitude had come. So when he started coming down, they started shouting, this is the guy that raised Lazarus from the dead. They began to praise God for, and not only Lazarus, all the mighty miracles that they had been seeing over these last three and a half years. So he enters into Jerusalem with great rejoicing and fanfare and, and, and in fulfillment of the prophetic scripture. Is this clear? Now something happens here. Saying, verse 38, blessed be the king. I didn't hear you. That cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. And glory in the highest. This is what the people were saying, you know. And they were inspired by the Holy Spirit to say this. And some of the Pharisees. You know, you can be in the midst of prophetic fulfillment. And you will know what's going on. And you go contrary to the will of God. These guys had, they, 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 they were so, their hearts were so hardened. They couldn't, they couldn't even perceive what was happening. So the Pharisees. And, and, and. Thank God it was not all. It was some. You know, we had good Pharisees. We had good Pharisees like Nicodemus, Joseph of Ar Arimathea, you know, who were flowing with what was going on. But there was some of the... the being a Pharisee was not a problem. It was being a hypocritical Pharisee. The Pharisees were the guys who knew the word of God. These are the guys who should have known Zechariah 9, 9. And that it was being fulfilled. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude, <laughs> said unto him, Master, rebuke. <laughs> Some of them knew. Some of them felt that Jesus was taking the glory for himself. 
Now, let, let me explain something to you. You know, the reason why some of them said this was this. They knew that the Messiah was coming. They were expecting a military Messiah. They were expecting a son of David. This Galilean that comes from, from Nazareth does not fit that picture in their own understanding. So they felt that Jesus should not take this glory, that it was meant for the Messiah. So they felt that you're not the Messiah now. Rebuke them. Tell them not to say this. They should be saying this. This is reserved for the Messiah. But Jesus was the Messiah. But they didn't know it. Because of their unbelief, their hardness of heart, their eyes were blinded. So they, they, you know, they were, they were telling, because they knew the word of God. These guys knew the word. Master, rebuke your disciples. Tell them not to stop blaspheming. You're singing a song that is reserved for the Messiah. And we all know that when the Messiah comes, going to be a son of David. And he's going to deal with the Romans. And you are not fitting the pattern. Colonel Jean Noir, verse 40. And he answered and said unto them, them who them Pharisees, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, I, I, I wanted them to do it. A very miracle. Exactly. You know, and you know, God doesn't talk carelessly. He said, if you try it, if these should hold their peace, the stones would, after three minutes, mm -mm, why the scripture must be fulfilled at the entry of Jerusalem. This shows you the integrity of God's word. God will not allow. He said, if they, if they dare keep quiet, it has said, Shout! Rejoice greatly, for thy king cometh, sitting on a colt, and the follower, it must be fulfilled. He said, if the people don't do it, the stones will do it. Give the Lord a clap offering. If immediately, if the people, if the people stop doing it, the stones will do it. I got a, I got a fax. I got a tweet. I said, Lord. I said, the stones, he said, oh, yes. He said, the stones are inanimate objects. And they, I mean, the stone doesn't have life. He said, they had no more life than a donkey. I said, Lord, he said, he said, he said yeah. He said, I, will, I, would, I would make sure that those stones, be, I would, they would, life would be animated inside them. And they would speak God's word. Who has who give, who 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 has given who gives man the mouth to talk? Is it not God? There is nothing God cannot do. Turn to your neighbor and say, "With God, all things are possible. Even stones will talk." Give the Lord a clap offering. What are you talking about? There is nothing. You know, it's because our generation already doesn't know God very well. Then we think that they think. Is it, is it, is it, is it, they will soon know. Thank you, Prof. Is it, is, it, is it to make stones talk? That's a big problem. Is anything too hard for him? Is he not the God, is he not the God who made... Can you make a donkey? When it was necessary, a dumb animal, an animal that has no intelligence normally, the donkey not only spoke, he spoke with feeling. He said, Balaam, he said, all these days I've been serving you. <laughs> ah, God is great. Give the Lord another clap offering. We are going to see something in this end time. Well, you know, this generation hasn't seen God. We are, we are going to, this called a, that's called a, one, that's the meaning of wonder, Yanu. When you see a donkey talk, he said, and he forbade the madness of the prophet. 
In our language, that means, say your, your, let's say in the American way, say your nuts. <laughs> okay? Your head is not correct. I'll get the donkey to get your head correct. The donkey. If they had tried this thing that day, the stone immediately, you would have seen stones talking. Another tweet. You know, <laughs> when you begin to understand God better and better and technology, you say, what is, what is technology? You know, what? <laughs> How can I explain this? If you had, well, well I'm, I'm standing here now in this hall. Okay? In the year of the Lord, 2019, our forefathers who lived in Ibadan, in this same Ibadan, this same place, was probably bush or some place where they worship some silly god. 300 years ago, I'm just, you know, using. If they could see me now, 300 years ago, what they would see would be a miracle to them. They don't know what electricity is. I have something in my hand. Ah, all on shuffle. What? Oh, yeah, then jadi. Atun bonta. Because they don't understand. They don't know. They don't know about. They didn't know about about electricity. They didn't know about science. It hadn't even been invented. So if if they had a peek into the future, what they would be seeing now would be a miracle. Now we know today that it was actually reflecting my voice through an electrical signal. Amen. But, you know, that's what you know because you have that knowledge. But, you, don't, you know, if you don't have that knowledge, to, as far as you're concerned, that thing is talking. So, no problem for God to make stones talk. Give the Lord a clap offering. No problem. No, if, if you could make it. He would have just put in something in there. Some kind of robotic something. That's, that's just a, Amen. Amen. This God is great. This God is great. It's great. Oh, making a stone talk is not... Now with the knowledge of technology, I know, putting a, making a stone talk is not a problem. Amen? He will just push... He, you know, the angels and all that, they don't push some technology to that thing. Things will start talking. Instantly. And the people then, of course, they don't know technology. They don't know anything. They'll just hear the stones talking. They say that God, the, the man said they would talk. And he would talk. Well, I said all of that to say this. That's why you need to have faith that there is nothing in your situation that God cannot do. Don't limit God with your thinking. Because your thinking is only limited to the knowledge you have now. Who, what do you know? What do you know? What you think is impossible to God is not a problem. You do it instantly. That's why we need the spirit without measure. Pastor Boyga, I want to see what God would do. He said, demonstrating the powers of the age to come. Then people will say, ah! He said, I went to that church. <laughs> the stones are there talking. God can do that. Why not? Why not? Eh? He won't listen to the preacher. He doesn't believe the preacher, so the stone will talk to him. Ah, oh, they're going to so. <laughs> Can you imagine how he's sitting down in a chair? He's not listening to what the preacher says, and the chair just talks to him. Ah, ah, my bongo done so. Instantly, <laughs> instantly he will change. He say, ah, I saw something today. I've never seen it before in my life. That's a sign to him. Oh, no problem for God to do it. Mm. Go and chew on that. Am I helping anybody here? 
He says, if these should call their peace, the stones immediately. I like the word. That word is very important. You know why? That time must not pass because the scripture must be fulfilled. These are the kind of things I'm, I'm going to close. You know, I, I was going to go to weeping over Jerusalem, but we'll do that in our next lesson. See, after I passed that place, I started weeping over Jerusalem. Not for tomorrow, for 40 years down the road. Uh, you know, I'm, I'll still do it next, in my next lesson. But you know, the real problem was that the religious leaders rejected the prophets. And that's what happens to any generation. When you reject the prophets, you bring judgment. He said, he wept over Jerusalem. He said, how often would I have gathered thee? Given you covering. But now your house is left unto you desolate. For you did not know the time of your visitation. May this generation not regret. Not knowing the time of her, her visitation. There are people like me, and not me only, but others, that God has sent to this generation. And some of this generation has rejected it. And the glory is coming. You like it, you don't like it. And for those who are on the right side, it's going to be a great day. And for those who are on the wrong side, it's going to be a terrible day. It's going to be the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Look at that fire. To the gold and silver, refinement and reward. To the wood and earth, destruction. Get on the right side. Build with gold. Build with silver. So that as this glory comes, you are on the right side. I always joke with my, my assistants, uh, Pastor Laulu and Praise. At the end of the message, I say, are you still on my side? They say, Pastor, I'm always on your side. I say, uh, we have to check. I say it jokingly. But it's the truth. Jesus, when Moses came down from the mountain, he said, who is on the Lord's side? Watch this, to the Lord's people. He wasn't saying it to unbelievers. Everybody, every person, all the Lord's people should be on the Lord's side. But why would the prophet have to ask God's people who is on the Lord's side? It means that sometimes God's people will not be on the Lord's side. God forbid. Thank you, sir. But it can happen. And that's why you have to make sure you stay on the Lord's side. Let us pray. I think you've got enough for tonight. <laughs> Let's talk to God. Who is on the Lord's side? The glory is coming, folks. We know that. Even from that prophetic word that God gave us tonight, which is not in my nose, as came by a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. Because we, the, the good morning Jesus is being fulfilled now. So we know the other part is, is just going to follow it. And Pastor Quega sent me a note on, on Sunday. This is the eighth month. New beginnings. And so I don't worry about these elections. The glory that is going to come is going to take care of all the fallout. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Just pray. Just pray. Let me tell you something, you know. Only God knows the hearts of men. Someone can say something and they can mean something else. And some of you think it's not. The heart. So it's God who knows the heart. You just leave it to God. He will sort everybody out. Hallelujah. Let's talk to God. There is a longing only you can feel. A raging tempest. A raging tempest. Only you. Only you can still. My soul is thirsty. My soul is thirsty, Lord. To know you. To know you as a more. Drink from the river. from the beginning.
soul is thirsty. My soul is thirsty, Lord. To know you. To know you as a Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Drink from the river. Close before your throne. Take me deeper. Yes, Lord. Deeper in love. To sunrise. I will seek your face. I will seek your face. Drawn by the Spirit. To the promise of your grace. My heart, glory to God. My heart has found in you a hope that will abide. Forever satisfied. Take me deeper, glory to God. pray together in a minute, but I want you to pray individually now and say, Lord, take me deeper. I want to know you as I'm known. All these things we're talking about, I don't want to be theory. I want to experience your glory. To know you as I'm known. I want to be a participator in this great glory that is just before us. And it's just before us. As we've seen from Psalm 110 tonight, once the people are willing and they're joining and they're praying with a holy array in the break of the morning, the next thing is the glory that's going to bring about the crushing of the nations. So we know we're right on time, on target. You want to make sure, like we said, you're on the right side. Say, Lord, Respond from your heart. Say, God, I thank you for this word. Help me, Lord. I, I consecrate afresh. I consecrated it before. And I'm going to keep doing it with greater and greater increasing determination, increasing consecration. You should be going from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. The glory of today should be greater than that of yesterday. 
The consecration of today should be greater than that of yesterday. The determination of today should be greater than the one of yesterday. Re, re, do this now, and then we're all going to pray together. Let these things not just be words. You can see what is coming. You can see what is coming. And the God looks at the heart. James, Peter, and John could make it. You can make it. If Judas could carry the borrowed anointing, certainly you can. Certainly you can. I didn't say you should be like Judas. What I'm saying is that God does not even demand immediate perfection. But what he does demand is immediate, honest consecration, total, wholehearted, you know, commitment and practice. That's what he demands. Once that is there and you continue, the glory will come. Thank you. Say, Father, we confess our sins. So we claim with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name we have life. Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. Father, I thank you for your word. It has come to me tonight, reminding me that you are God who watches over his word to perform it, that the scripture cannot be broken. Lord, by two immutable things, which is impossible for you to lie, I lay hold now on the hope the hope of this glory that is set before me. Father, I know your word will come to pass and I want to prepare myself so that I will be on the right side when your glory appears in this hour. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for helping me to join the volunteers that are joining your army at the break of day with a holy armor. Oh God, have mercy on me. Help me to be faithful, to walk worthy of this vocation, this high calling that you called me in this hour. Help me not to despise it. Help me not to sell my birthright for a piece of pottage. Have mercy on me to stay faithful and true until this glory appears in Jesus' name. Amen. Mercy on us as we pray. in Jesus' name, you may be seated. We're going to go into praise and worship in a minute. I just want to, as we were praying, something came to me. It's uh, a reminder. On Sunday, I talked about forsaking sins of omission. And in the course of that message, or the Bible study, I can't remember which, I spoke prophetically about those who will carry the glory. Like in the time of David, they put the ark, which is symbolic of the glory of God, on their shoulders, and every six paces they sacrificed. God does not demand immediate perfection. That would be unfair. It would be unjust. But he demands total consecration and immediate practice. Make sure you're doing that. Watch and pray always. Watch and pray always. 
get up early in the morning, join the Good Morning Jesus uh, platform, put on the holy armor, you know, then throughout the day, once every six hours at every opportunity, pray in the spirit, read your Bible, just practice, just keep, you'll be fine. You just do that. You'll be fine. When the glory comes, you'll be ready. You may not get the full thing, but you get something, you know, and then it'll grow. Lord, I should say that to encourage you. Amen? But do not be negligent. Don't treat these things with disdain. Don't. The worst thing you can do now is unbelief. Not to believe. <laughs> as sure as the morning is going to dawn, he will come. His glory is imminent. It's imminent. Amen. Say, Father, we confess our sins, so we clean with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name we have life. Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. Father, give life to our spirits now. And that in a measure that's more than enough to enable us praise and worship God. Effectually and fervently as we worship God now with our offerings and as we minister unto the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand to our feet. Give Lord a super clap offering. Rejoice, rejoice, daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Sing, rejoice with all your heart, O Jerusalem. Rejoice, 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 daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Sing, rejoice with all your heart, O Jerusalem. Taken your punishment, destroyed your enemies. King of Israel, Lord of all is he in the midst of us, he is mighty. Shout aloud, shout aloud, Israel, sing, rejoice with all your heart, O Jerusalem. Roni, Roni, Roni. Jerusalem, Roni, 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 Basil, Basil, Israel, Sim, Kibal, Sim, Bakol, Levi, Bak, Jerusalem, for the Lord your God, for the Lord your God in the midst of you, my Jesus' name, rejoicing over you. We sung of gladness, sing joyfully, he will save us. Rejoice, rejoice, daughter of Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Sing, rejoice with all your heart, O Jerusalem. The zeal of God has consumed us, it falls in our soul.
celebrate. Sing God to the Lord. I will sing to Him a new song. Celebrate. Sings my 